Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. And you're listening to Murder or Myth. The true crime podcast where not everything is true. The aim of the game is to find out whether the story is actually a murder or if it's just a myth. Now, let's get started. Hi Louise. Hi Emma, how are you? Good. Not too bad. Um, brand new question. year. Brand new year. Brand new year, 2024. Our second episode of 2024. Our second episode? Our first episode, would you Our believe, of 2024. Episode. Why did I wish them a happy new year in the last episode? Because it was, it was close to the new year. I think you just wanted to segue away from me saying it was Christmas. Yeah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think Got we're... Got that one wrong. I think we're in 2024 now. Hope we're in 2024. We are in 2024 now. What for if we sure. did it? We will make it to 2024. <laughs> Shouldn't have bring that in. Make it as in the podcast or make it as in our lives? I don't know. I, we're making it in. Maybe our friendship, <laughs> that's for sure on the line these days. Us, in general. <laughs> I was just agreement yeah. about this podcast. I feel like it's so much more split than I ever thought it was going to be. Like, up at this point, I feel like I thought we were the same person. And now we're actually incredibly different. Same person, different fonts, some would say. Different ends of the spectrum <laughs> of the same person. I like right. that. Yeah. Keeps the fun. It sure does. It also keeps my anxiety high. Hey, if the anxiety is high, where is the fun? Isn't high, where is the fun? As well, I like to tell myself. Permanently in a state so of high anxiety. You coded. Okay. Um, you just gotta make it work, I think. So, are you ready to hear the story? Could not be more ready. <laughs> a high anxiety inducing story. Lovely. As per. They always are. Yeah. So, this is the Ice Cult Murder Mystery. Okay. Okay. So, this murder takes place in Manitoba, Canada in a town called Altona in 1990. Jason Allen was driving down the road to his house, home from working his night shift um, as a member of the Canada Police. So he sees his neighbour Mark Shaw lying on the top of his, at the top of his driveway and Jason quickly stopped to assist his neighbour. He had no warning sign of what he was about to see until he got as far as Mark's body. Mark was lying there under his porch roof, stabbed to death. There was a pool of frozen blood under his head and neck, yet nothing anywhere else to be seen. Jason immediately called his colleagues and a murder investigation ensued. There was no overt evidence aside from the blood pool pattern and the results of the post-mortem. The cause of death was determined to be a fatal stabbing wound resulting in the rupture of the carotid artery. There was no fibre or other DNA evidence found on Mark's body. The only extra thing found was at the site of the wound where traces of calcium, polyfluorocal substances and sodium were found. So they're trace chemicals. The Canada police had little to no leads to go off. So began looking for sources of these chemicals and why they were found in the victim's wound. There were suggested leads if the murder weapon material could possibly contain these chemicals or be made of them. However, there is no material known to have all three in such a trace configuration. A theory reported by some detectives was that the stabbing was an act of a fallen icicle. The three chemicals found were um, found in samples taken off nearby icicles at Mark's house. So they're common chemicals found in rainwater. This backed up the storyline of a rogue falling icicle striking Mark and killing him almost instantaneously. However, the coroner noted that the extremely precise nature of the wound in the neck, this pointed to an incredible tiny chance that the stabbing was by chance, like just it falling. Mm -hmm. So other points that rebuffed this storyline is that Mark would have had to be on the ground lying horizontally for the wound to have happened the way it did um, which seems kind of non-plausible and if the icicle had fallen it would likely have struck him in the head if anywhere else. So police looked at Mark's background and family and could find no motive or reasoning for the crime. They searched his home and everything was there so it wasn't an attempted break-in either. The only thing that pointed to a possible robbery was that there was no cash in his wallet when they found it on him. However there was no story or corroboration to see if this was normal or not and sorry i forgot my question real quick oh was there no dna like on his body if there was like a no there was no like extra things only himself like no other fibers from clothing or dna or hair or anything that's kind of unusual wouldn't it be yeah you have to be very wrapped up protected to not you have to be very like technical i don't know does maybe cold weather come into it shit that off. Um, yeah, the case fizzled out with no suspects, witnesses or weapon and the case of Mark Shaw's death is a cold case to this day. There are those in Altona that believe a freak act of nature is to blame and those who believe it was a murder in which a lucky perpetrator left behind no traces. Is that the end of the story? That is the end of the story. Okay, that's kind of a tricky one. Okay. But I'm gonna say myth. Okay. Fine, do you want to give say. me my re- Do you want me to give my reasoning or do you want to say what it is first? Uh, give your reasoning. Go on. <laughs> Final answer. Oh, it's okay. your final answer? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it is a myth. <laughs> okay. 
So, again, Icicle Murder Mystery. That sounded like a name that had been planned, but it sounded less like it worked. Oh. <laughs> less real. Yeah. Okay. Like murder mystery or something. I don't know. It's well, I mean, yeah, I planned it. Like, I wrote it down. Obviously, yeah. But... <laughs> something about the murder mystery just doesn't sound like it. Yeah, it like... sounds like a game. Mm. Okay. It actually okay, did think yeah. it was going to be a game. Okay. Um, a rupture of the carotid artery to do with the fibers and also the technical detail you gave about the chemicals all seemed like a myth but it's like why um so like what if i said that i was like oh i stopped by an ice called maybe (laughs) (laughs) that's even worse that's even more mythy in what sense like maybe like the chemicals matched rainwater so of course he got stabbed by an ice skull but then it's like if i just said we got, there was a hole. Who's putting that no together? You're meant to be. The detective, I guess. And my oh, meant no. to be. No, but like... But yeah, the detective, like... Who knew the chemicals in ice water? I guess... Like, that's your literal job as a detective. You have to figure out why things are the way they are. You'd be like, you'd immediately look up. You'd be, the coroner would say, here's the three chemicals, and you'd look them up. And then it's like, oh, rainwater. Okay, hmm, rainwater can't kill a person at an icicle. Doom, 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 doom. Mm-hmm. No. Anyways, you guessed it was a myth, so you yeah. were correct. I think it was the rupture of the carotid artery type. It was like just like the details. Okay. I guess it was that it so had those specific details, but not like vaguely, vaguely specific. I think like, that's the sweet point. Yeah, it's very specific. Like, how could he? How could? How could they have gotten away with the murder so well? Like mm. that. Yeah, that's the thing. I looked. I looked a bunch of times. An icicle technically is a good murder weapon, except also very bad because you know it's not easy to hold and stuff. But it melts. Yeah. No murder weapon. It's just water. True, but also, like, not that easy to just stab someone with an icicle, I feel. Yeah. Like, you'd have to have them in a position of attack. Like, I feel like you couldn't come at them with an icicle the same way you could with a knife. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I feel Do like you you'd most definitely could. Yeah, probably. Even more so, because they'd be like, oh, hi. Oh, you have an icicle in your hand? Dead. Well, you've seen a knife, you'd be on the defensive for sure. Yes. But, but also, also, just yeah. a knife just seems like it would have a... Mm. I guess, I guess I'm, I think... under, I'm probably underestimating the sharpness of an icicle. A lot I definitely of am because I know they you can die, but that's yeah. yeah, that's falling from like a couple stories of buildings of height, so it's yeah. got more of an impact. But I'm just wondering, like, if I'm standing right next to you, yeah, I I'm mean, sure I it would still have the same impact. It's just like a solid thing. It's I'm sure it's the same as like a wooden stake or something. Yeah, but it's just like the point is it not starting to melt? Like, how long does it take you to grab the icicle to then head over to and then stab me? Like, is there? I think the force and the heft will like negate the melting mm. and like even if something's blunt and you shoved it at someone i feel like it would still go through them yeah i guess it's yeah it is probably okay, sorry. <laughs> just prim- dropped my laptop there. <laughs> primarily the force but yeah i think it was how specific those details were without the like it just seems crazy mm. that's never been solved there's never been yeah. any like connections at all i got you but definitely plausible thank you i'm gonna try it out <laughs> Okay, and on Definitely that <laughs> dire note, let's end this episode here. What a great start to 2024. Uh, thanks for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe. On this week's episode, Louise correctly guessed my myth story was in fact a myth. Find us on all streaming platforms. Join us next week for another thrilling adventure. Remember, it's myth until proven murder. Slay. Slay. Yes. I mean, I don't even really care that much because I got the last one right. We guessed all got- of them tonight, which is worrying. Where is it? We're growing.